Physicists have shown that the past can be changed in quantum physics. That's either very impressive or nonsense. You can't really change the past, can you? And yet a new paper by two physicists claims exactly this, at least in quantum physics. Let's have a look. Quantum physics works extremely well. It predicts experiments with absurd accuracy, but conceptually it's a disaster. In quantum physics, we describe everything by something called a wave function, usually denoted with the Greek letter psi. From the wave function, we can calculate probabilities for measurement results. But what is the wave function? Is it anything? Is it real? And what happens if you measure it? Physicists have debated this for more than 100 years, which in physics counts as still early days. One of the most important arguments of this debate goes back to Eugene Wigner. He was trying to make sense of what happens in a measurement in quantum physics. Whatever a measurement is in detail, it has the effect of converting the possibilities that the wave function describes into tangible outcomes. Before you make a measurement, a particle can do strange things, like being in two places at once. After you measure it, it must have decided on one. Wigner said, OK, but suppose that someone produces a particle so that it's in two places at once, let's say left and right at the same time, and then he measures the particle and finds it left. We know how to describe that. But now suppose that this person has a friend who waits outside the laboratory and who hasn't seen the measurement outcome. For this friend, the entire laboratory is in a state where the outcome of the measurement was left and the outcome of the measurement was right until the person opens the door and looks at the result. Sounds absurd? It is. But this is what quantum physics seems to say. Now, normal people might have left it at this, but physicists are anything but normal. And so they've instead derived theorems about the absurdity that ensues. A particularly famous one is fairly recent and goes back to Frauchinger and Renner. They said that if you duplicate this setup with the experiment and their friend, so that you have two experimenters and two friends, and you make sure that the particles that the experimenters are working on are entangled, then there are cases where there's no combination of measurement results that all of them agree on. This seems to demonstrate that measurement outcomes either are not objectively real or that all measurement outcomes are objectively real, but each in its own universe. The new paper now is a new twist on this idea in which the two experiments with their friends are not done at the same time, but after each other. An observer measures a quantum system and gets a result. Later, another observer can either check that result or discard the measurement and do a new one. If the second observer checks the result, then, well, they find the same thing. If they discard the measurement and do a new one, the result of the second measurement depends on what the first was. And the stunning thing is that there are possible outcomes for the second measurement that are incompatible with any definite result of the first measurement. It's like the first measurement wasn't real. They have erased the past. OK, you might say, but just exactly what does it mean to discard the first measurement? They mean that, in principle, the interactions that made the measurement happen, say a particle that hit an atom and emitted a few photons, can be undone. This should be possible because in quantum physics, any process can be reversed in time. Indeed, there are some experiments in which this has been done. They sometimes make headlines saying that physicists have turned back time or something. Something, but really it's just performing operations so that you undo exactly what happened previously. So this is what they rely on, that you can reverse this measurement. And the conclusion is then that in quantum physics, you can't treat past events as something that definitely happened or didn't happen. Even the history of a particle might both have happened and not. It's either that or or each history happened in a different universe. What are we to make of this? I think this argument is formally correct and it's a real mind bender, but the conclusion that I draw from this is an entirely different one. It's not that the past has no definite events, rather it's that if you can reverse a measurement, then it wasn't a measurement. 
That is, to me, the paper shows that we still don't understand what a measurement really is. So I give this a 2 out of 10 on the bullshit meter. Nice paper, but with flaws in the interpretation. That said, I agree on the overarching point that quantum physics is difficult to reconcile with our everyday notion of causality. There is something very weird going on at the intersection of quantum physics and time that we haven't yet figured out. And this paper might be a step on the way, or at least a very scenic detour. Do you know the joke about the two guys running from a bear? Do you really think we'll outrun the bear, says one of them? And the other one says, I don't have to outrun the bear, I just have to outrun you. That's how I think about internet safety. I don't have to outsmart hackers, I just have to be a little more difficult target than most of you. That's why I use NordVPN. NordVPN is an app that makes your internet connection ultra secure. You install it on your phone or laptop and use it to create a safe connection. But it's not just that. NordVPN comes with a malware shield that warns your fake shops, malicious ads, phishing attempts and more. It doesn't just protect your privacy, it also makes your life easier. You know how some content is blocked for users in certain locations? For example, if you're in Europe, a lot of pages in the United States have become inaccessible in recent years because they don't comply with European privacy regulations. That can get really annoying. You see, NordVPN has thousands of servers all over the world. Just pick a server in the United States. Problem solved. To make use of my special offer, go to Nord vpn.com slash Sabine or use the coupon code Sabine. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.